is Joseph Connor and welcome to my Skillshare class. In this class you will learn how to make an ice cream in Cinema 4D. In order to make the most out of this class you will need the following tools to hand. A copy of Cinema 4D, anything above versions R21 will work fine. In the next section I'll show you where you can download a trial version of Cinema so you can follow along without spending a penny and see if 3D modeling is something you like. Number two. A mouse or drone tablet. You could probably use a trackpad if you're using a laptop, however, I wouldn't recommend it. And number three, finally, a fast enough computer, obviously, to run cinema with about 16 gigabyte of RAM and you should be golden. Hello guys and welcome to this course. So in this course I'm going to take you through the steps of creating an ice cream in Cinema 4D. Um, but before we get started I just want to make sure that you're familiar with the interface of Cinema 4D. Um, basically uh, before you start this class make sure that you uh, are familiar with the interface and how everything works. Um, just before you start it'll be a lot more comfortable to follow along if you've never had any experience in cinema so uh, just a word of warning before we get started here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do in this class we're going to create the cone and basically a cone is if you think about it in a simple term it's just a circle a flat circle but it's folded in on itself so I'm going to start off with a circle shape um, a spline shape and then I'll just uh, change that to the AZ axis, which will make it flat against the floor, well, the 3D floor. Um, but we also want to make the edge not so uniform against, uh, because we want to make it look more natural. So I'm going to do that by using a displacer. So we'll just drop a displacer in there. And then I always get mixed up with doing this, but we need to put the displacer inside of the circle path. So we just dra drag that down and it'll go inside of the circle path like this. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some noise using the shader. Uh, so we'll go up to noise and then nothing really happens here. So what we want to do is we want to kind of make the edge a bit spiky. And the way that we do that is we go up to circle. And then as you see down here, we've got, um, we want to change the points to uniform. It would usually come in as adaptive as default, uh, but we want to change it to uniform. And then we want to change the number to maybe a hundred, uh, which will be something like this. And the good thing with displacers is you can actually, um, you can uh, layer them. So if you hold control and then if you hover over the displacer like this, so if you click on the displacer, pull it down, you'll get a little arrow that uh, points to the left and a little box. If you hold control, you'll that little box will show up with a plus sign and then you can just copy the displacer which means we can layer the displacer. So at the moment uh, we have something like this. So if we go into the noise and then we go down to global scale and then we just change that to maybe, I don't know, 50. And then we have a look at the shape and see how it changes. So now we have a much rougher edge now, uh, which is kind of what we're looking for. So this is, yeah, this is looking good as as the cone. Um, so the next thing we'll do is we want to um, extrude it. So we want to make it into an actual 3D object. So we just go up to the extrude and then we drop that in there and then we'll just pull the whole circle and drop it in and it'll come in <laughs> something like this, like a funky shape. Uh, yeah, we're pretty much done. <laughs> no. no. Um, so if we go up to extrude here and then we go to object, and we'll just put all of the, the movement to zero. Uh, so it's kind of like a flat piece of paper, um, something like this. Beautiful. It's pretty cool, looking good. Um, it's kind of like a rough circle. Uh, so that's great and all, but how do we actually do anything with it? Because it hasn't got any um, points in there. So what we can do is we go to extrude and then we go to cap 
and then depending on the version of uh, cinema you're using this interface will look different but you'll have the same options uh, if you go down to cap type it'll come in as default as ngon uh, if you go down to um i usually use regular grid uh but on, it depends on the version you're using. Sometimes the regular grid can come as a different option underneath, but whatever. Uh, in Cinema RD21, it shows up in its own little, in, in the drop down menu here. And then what you want to do is you want to change the quad dominant on so that you get rid of these angles here. So now we need to add some thickness to the actual uh, cone surface. And the way, the best way that I've found to do this is not by using extrude, it's by using um, the cloth surface. So we just add that to our hierarchy and then we take the extrude and we'll drop that inside. And we should start to have some thickness. No, actually, we need to adjust it. So if we change this to zero, and then we add thickness to, let's say, I don't know, maybe three, then you start to get like a little bit of a thickness to the actual uh, texture. Also, I want to change something quickly as well. Uh, this is on 10. I'm going to change this to 6 just to reduce the, uh, the grid size. And the next step is we will make this into a cone shape. So now we're going to make the cone. Uh, we're going to uh, make this shape into a cone shape. And the best way we can do that is by projecting this shape onto a cone so we don't really have to model too much uh, so what we'll do is we'll make a cone first we'll just drop a cone in like that and then we can put one uh, one no actually what am I doing 35 so that's going to be a top radius bottom radius will be one so it's a cone shape and then we'll change the height se segments to 16 and the rotation segments to let's say let's 40 65 64 and there we go we've got a cone and then we're going to uh, take the cap off as well so we have a, a hollow cone uh, let's just take turn this shape off just so we know what we're doing here and let's slice this so we'll slice this which we've got here We'll slice this and make it 720 so that it kind of like rotates round on itself and then a little bit more like so like this so now what we need to do is we need to project this shape onto the cone and the best way that we can do that is by using a surface tag so we put a surface in and then we just drop that underneath the cloth surface like this um, and then by default it'll come in as projection but what we want is mapping UV and then we'll take the cone and then drop that in there and let's see what we've got so as you can see now this shape the shape that we created earlier is kind of mapped to the cone as you can see like that so we'll just turn this cone off but it's not exactly looking like an ice cream at the moment <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is and it's also uh, kind of squeezing the polygons as you go down we want to we want to kind of get rid of that uh, so we can do that very easily uh, so if we go to the cone We'll just turn this one off like this. Yep. We go to the cone and hit C, and then we turn that into an editable editable object. Uh, we'll just turn the cone off here. And then we go over here and we go to Edit UV. And you'll get this wonderful little tab up here. Beautiful. Uh, I'll click on the cone, change this to ABF and if we just hit apply we should get something that looks kind of like this 
I uh, just want to interject here because I think I made a mistake when I was showing you how to create this. So basically you're in the UV editor now and all the settings are correct, but uh, make sure that you, clicked on, you click on auto realign uh, just because at the moment I think I didn't click on it and this and the this shape is actually outside of the the UV editor uh, which means that you'll get kind of the UVs cut off um, so make sure that when you're at this step you click on auto realign and then cut selected edges uh, if you click that then everything should be fine uh, I just missed that step at this stage um, and I'm just re-editing and putting this stage back in uh, so yeah, just make sure you click on auto reline and everything should be good. Thank you. So now that we've done that, we now have the cone this way. But if we look closer, we can see that the edge of the cone um, is kind of cut here. So we need to adjust that. So if we go into surface and then we just kind of change this so that you get rid of this line here, if you can see and that should start to look pretty good now all we need to do is create a spiral uh, on the cone um, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a step effector so let's go to more graph and then we'll go down to effector and then we'll go down to step effector uh, Let's turn the cone on and we'll turn the surface off here, like so. Nope, let's turn, hang on, turn those back on and we'll turn the, the cloth simulation off. So we just have the cone. And then basically what we want to do now is Nope, wrong way around. So put the step effector inside of the uh, the clone, and what we want to do is we want to adjust the points of the um, of the cone. So we go to deformer and then deformation, and then go down to point. And now we can affect the points, which will kind of give us a spiral. You'll see in a second. Uh, by default, the step effector comes in on scale, but we don't need that. We just need permission. Uh, position and then we'll just adjust that by maybe four centimeters let's have a look and as you can see now we kind of have this spiral so this is going to be applied to our uh, cloth simulation or cloth surface uh, once we put that on so let's have a look and see what we have uh, once we put that back on so let's turn the cone off We'll turn this one back on like that, and as you can see, we now have the uh, spiral, the cone kind of not interacting with itself, it's kind of spiraling around on itself, so it's getting closer to an ice cream cone now, um, which looks pretty good. Uh, let's just give that a quick render. Oh, no, let's give that a quick and uh, and we'll just see what it looks like so yeah now it looks pretty cool so the next thing we need to do is we need to act, add some texture to it and then we'll add some lights and then color all right guys i'm glad you've stuck with me this far so now we're going to texture the uh the corn the waffle corn so we want to have like a bit of a waffle effect um or waffle effect like a square effect on there so what we're going to do is i'm going to use the displacement to do that uh, so to create a texture all you need to do is go down to this little box area where the textures are and double click and you'll just get a flat generic texture which is just like a flat uh, texture with nothing really happening uh, so if we look at basic it's usually just has color and reflection um, so then what we need to do is click on displacement and then we can go to the texture and we just drop it onto the object. So if we double click on the texture, go back to basic and then we go to displacement. 
we can go down to texture uh, and we can start adding some things to it now uh, so what I want to do is I want to add a tile effect to it and the way that you do that is you just go to the texture here and then we'll go down to let me remember how to do this again surfaces and then you go down to tiles and then we've added a tile texture to it here but it's not exactly going to look uh, like what we want to look like so if we double click on the texture and we turn this one white uh, this one black and this one black like so um, but it's probably going to be too big so let's just have a quick render of that yep that does not look like an ice cream cone uh, so the way that we're going to do that is we'll just expand the texture let me turn the surface off first so we can see what we're working with here and we can just render this sorry it might not render wow <laughs> that's pretty big uh, actually let's turn it down to 30 percent 30 uh, that should kind of work better ah right okay so the reason this is happening is because the grid can't be evenly divided across the surface so what we need to do is we need to go back into the texture here and then go down to sub polygon displacement so what this will do is evenly divide it across the surface so if we click on that and then round ge uh, geometry and then let's have a look and see what we have there yeah that's better that's closer to what we're looking for but it's still quite high so we'll turn the height down to one centimeter and then we'll take a look let's take another look uh, let's zoom in see what the edges are like so that's kind of more what we're looking for here um, which is perfect uh, and then we can just put the surface back on uh, just to see what it looks like on the actual cone so if we render that that's kind of whoop, that's kind of looking quite cool there uh, still slightly too thick for my liking but uh, let's turn the surface off for a second and we can go back to the surface so we've got height on one uh, so now what we want to do is we want to add a bit more of a uh, texture to the uh, to the surface so what we, can do, we can do that by adding uh, a layer uh, we can do that by adding a layer so if we add a layer and then we click on the layer we can add some noise like this um, go down to so if we click on the noise and then we go down to global scale maybe we can put that to 300 here see what this looks like okay that's not really doing much uh, let's change the noise to FBM and then see what that does so that's kind of done something that we're looking for but we've lost the squares so we need to go back to our layer uh, section and then we need to change the uh, the view mode to add and then let's see what this looks like so that's getting there and then we can change the these parameters here just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more so i'll put this down to 70 and then maybe the tiles down to maybe 30 and we can have a look and see what that looks like i'm pretty happy with that so far i think it's looking quite nice uh, so then we'll can turn it back on and then we can see what it looks like actually on the surface of the ice cream and that's pretty much it how you make the ice cream cone surface so now what we need to do is we need to add some colors lights and we're pretty much halfway there <laughs>
Uh, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a, a colorize effector or colorize effect uh, in the actual surface. But first, I just want to render this and we're going to have a look at something. So if we render this, you can see that the pattern is inverted. So the way that we're going to fix that is if you go to surface and then you go down to scale and then you just put that as a minus. And then actually what will make life easier is if we just put interactive render region. And as you can see, you can see now it's inverted. So it looks more like a, uh, a wafer. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to color it. Uh, so let's go back into the texture. Just double click on the texture. And we'll go to the displays here. And what we want to do is we want to uh, copy this, uh, this shader to the color. Uh, so the way that we do that is we go here and then we go to copy shader go to color and then down to texture and then we paste this texture this shader onto here so what will happen is it will change to kind of a black and white image as you can see here which is kind of already the effect that we want but now we want to color it and the way that we will color it is if you click on layer here and then you go to effect and then you go down to colorize and you'll get this little black box which will immediately change the color of the the wafer so you can do this from an image uh, but i'm just going to do this from the top of my head and if you click underneath you'll get like a little thing that slides along if you just click anywhere uh, you'll get like a thing that you can move along and double click on that and your color parameters will come up so we'll just pull this along here and then I'll pull this down so, so let's try and get like what a wafer would look like something like that maybe and it should update once we hit OK so let's see what this looks like that's kind of getting there uh, maybe a bit lighter uh, we'll make it a bit lighter like that and then we'll make this side a little bit lighter like like that and as you can see uh, we have now added color to it so and then this is a bit too light so I'm just gonna darken that up a little bit maybe a bit too dark now <laughs> uh, let me change that back so yeah i'm pretty happy with that so as you can see you can see the two colors coming through like a gradient um and now that we've got that what we're going to do for the next step is i'm going to show you how to light this and set up the lights and then after that we'll go on to the cream and i'll show you how to make the ice cream on the top and then even add some sprinkles so we've got our texture set up on our uh, cone and what we need to do now is we'll just set up a, a in interactive render re uh, region just to check it out here. And um, what I did notice is that there is some uh, reflectance on here. So I'm going to take that off just to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, also, if you want to ch adjust the resolution of the interactive render window you can adjust it by moving this little point here so if you move it to the top this is how accurate your render will be um, so you can zoom in and just check it out uh, so what we will do now is we're going to add some light we're going to add a light source to to the model just to make it stand out and look a little bit more realistic um, and the way that we add lights is let me just turn this off a second we simply just go up to this tab here and then you can just drop in a light source like this um, and if you hit render it'll just kind of render like that because we haven't done anything to the light so I don't particularly want this type of light um, so what I will do is I'll go down to general and by default it'll come in as Omni an Omni light so what we want is we want a area light um, this is kind of like uh, a studio light this is the type of light that you would have in a studio so this is ideal uh, ideally the the right type of light that we want um, so then let me just adjust kind of where I want the light so 
at the moment it's bang center in the middle of the composition so I'm gonna put it to uh, 300 so this will go to the left actually I'll just put minus because I want to go to the right uh, so now this is on the right hand side uh, if we zoom out here you can see that the light is on the right hand side here and then we also if we render this now we have the light on the right hand side but there are no shadows by default on the lights that you drop in you have to turn the shadows on uh, this just helps with performance I think like as a standard light when you drop it in it just helps with the performance because once you start adding shadows and different sort of uh, kind of lighting techniques it can slow your system down uh, so if you go down to shadow here and what we want so let me just click that off uh, what we want is just shadow map soft and then if we render that uh, just maybe I just put interactive render region back on and if we zoom in we're kind of getting to an area that we want but it's not a hundred percent kind of how we want it we want it to be lit from the sides and the top so we need to add two of the light sources uh, so if we go back into the light and then we go to details uh, we also want to increase the size of this light so I'm going to just double it to 400 and then I'm also going to change the fall off to physically accurate so it's a bit more realistic so as you can see um, so what this does is it cr creates kind of an, a gradient of light so the closer to the light the lighter it is the further away it gets kind of darker so it's it's more physically accurate if that makes sense so let me just turn the interactive render region off and what we're going to do is we're going to just label this we'll name this as right light and then we'll just duplicate this by holding control and dragging it and then we'll name this left light light left light and we'll go into the code and we'll just take that off and then we'll rotate it by 360 or not maybe 180 so the light is now facing both sides so right and left so let's just have a look and see what that looks like now so we're getting kind of what we want now but now we need a light from above uh, so we'll do the same thing again uh, let me just turn this off and we'll just duplicate the light on the left hand side and we'll put that to zero uh, change that to minus 90 like that and we'll put this to 300 now we should have um, we should have our, our cone lit uh, kind of across the entire model so let's just render that and we'll see what we've got so we'll zoom in and we'll just have a look so at the moment it's kind of looking pretty nice um, I think all we need to do now is kind of add camera add a camera and then we're pretty much done for the corn um, also just before I end this section of the tutorial if you select all of the lights like this and then you go down to general um, at the moment it looks quite messy uh, <laughs> like so you can see all the lines for the lights if you go down to general and you select all the lights and then you go to uh, to show illumination you click that uh, it'll just get rid of all those different lines so it keeps your work area a little bit more um, organized um, and yeah so now the next part will be we'll set up a camera and then we'll get working on the cream <laughs> So
So to make the cream, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to more graph and then we'll go down to more spline uh, and we're going to make the um, the the cream from the more spline. Uh, this is kind of an interesting way to do it. So you normally you would use just a spline wrap, but uh, this is a different way that I think might be more useful. So um, we, we've got the more spline. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the size of it. So I'll change the uh, height and then I'll change the orientation to 90 degrees. And it's looking pretty good, uh, but the length is a little bit too long. So we'll just take the length down to, um, let's say 100, and then we'll add uh, 400 steps so that we can um, change the shape of it. Uh, so let's have a look back in our camera and we can see what that looks like. Let's move this camera up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't matter about the height because the height's going to come down to some way about here. Um, so yes, that is very good. Um, okay, so now what we'll do is we'll add uh, an effector. So we'll add a step effector to the more spline. Um, and now we want to change the rotation. So let's click on the rotation and then we will, I'll just take this off and then we'll maybe 1200 rotation like that. Um, that's looking pretty good. And then what we'll do is we'll add another step effector like this. And now we're going to focus on the position. So we'll, we'll change the position. So I usually, maybe 30, let's see what that looks like. Maybe a little bit too much, 25. Uh, maybe, yeah, let's do 25. I think that'll be good. Um, and we'll just have a look back in our camera. <laughs> Strange looking ice cream. Um, so the good thing about the step effectors is they have their effectors, so you can change the uh, the shape of them. So what we want to do is we want to we want to move. Um, the effector so that we can adjust the scale and the height. So we will just pull this up in the middle here. So this is looking more like an ice cream now. Uh, and if you want to click on the line, just hold control and then you'll get a little plus and then uh, you can just adjust the line wherever you want. So I think something kind of like that is probably going to work quite well for us. Uh, let me just adjust these points here, like that. And we can adjust this. Maybe move this along a bit. Let's get a little bit. Uh, that's looking good. And as you can see, we've kind of got the cream and the shape kind of almost done uh, but it's a little bit thin so what we're going to do is we're going to use sweep nerves um, on the shape but the shape that we're going to use is a, uh, a star and I want to change the size of the star so I'll change that to 17 inner radius and then the outer radius to 10 and I also want to give it uh, 7 points not 8 points uh, and I don't know where the star is. It doesn't really matter where it is, but you can see it. It's kind of just inside the cone there. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll add sweep nerves. So we'll add the sweep nerves, and then we'll add the start of the sweep nerves. And then we can pretty much add the more spline. And then what you'll see is you'll have the more spline kind of following the spline uh, which is pretty cool um, now what we're going to do is because it's still too thin we'll go to the sweep nerves 
and um, no, where we go? We'll go to the most spline, and then we'll just increase the diameter. That looks kind of crazy. <laughs> Actually, we'll go to sweep nerves, and then we'll take off the use rail direction, and then that kind of fixes the problem. Uh, let's go back down a second. Actually, we'll turn those back on because I don't like the shape. I'll just take this down like that, and then we'll turn these off. So let's have a look back in our camera and we can just render that. So it's kind of starting to look a bit like an ice cream now, um, but we have to do a few little things to it. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to change the uh, end rotation. I'm going to take that up to about 700. Just to give it a little bit more um, complexity and make it look a little bit random. Uh, so let's render that and we'll have a look. So it's starting to kind of take shape now. But now what, what we want to do is uh, I want to change the shape of the top of the ice cream. So if you go back to the sweep nerves and then go down to uh, scale. The good thing is because we have the step effectors, uh, we can actually um affect the, the good thing about the the more graph sorry uh more spline is that you can uh, change the um the width of the spline so what we want to do is we want to kind of have a sharp point at the top something kind of like that let's have a look that's kind of looking pretty interesting uh Nice, very nice. Whoop. I've just uh, I've just adjusted my camera there, but uh, let's just put the camera back in the center here, and then we can render it. Um, so yeah, it is kind of taking shape now. Uh, I think I might try and move the um, the ice cream up a little bit, just because I feel like it's stuck in the corn too much. Um, and let's just jump off there and we can render that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's taking shape, but, uh, as you can see at the bottom here, there's a huge gap. Um, so we, we can, we'll fix that in the next, uh, video, um, in the next section. Um, but the next thing we want to do is, as you can see, it kind of intersects with the corn. We, I'm going to squash that down a little bit so the way that we do that is if you make a um, null object how do I make a null object yeah null object like that and then we go over to uh, our shapes uh, what do I want I want an FFD uh, and then we can change the size to 80 by 80 by 80, lovely. Um, I'll just move this up inside the corn a little bit here, and then we'll also add some more shapes because we're going to adjust the corn. Uh, actually, I'm going to move this down a tiny bit into the cone, like so. And then let me just have a look at my orthographic views. That's pretty much bang on center. Um, and now what we will do is I will put the FFD into the null. And then I'm going to put the sweep nerves into the FFD. Uh, and then we'll go to the FFD uh, shape and we will change uh change these bottom points so you can add more points if you want but i'm just going to use a few i think this should kind of do the job but we'll find out in a minute <laughs> uh right so what this is going to do i hope oh, yeah, it's already doing it um 
we're going to adjust the size of the the cream at the bottom so let me just go around here there we go and then we missed that one um, so I'm going to adjust the scale of this uh, and just see how that looks so we just pull this in like that and then we can push it up slightly just so that it's not interacting with the side of the uh, ice cream so we'll pull this down a little bit here and then we'll just jump back and see what this looks like so it is intersecting a little bit there still so let's just go back over there and fix that bit um, we can just do it like this and that's looking pretty good so let's just have a look uh, and so far it looks pretty nice um, I'm pretty happy with the ice cream on the top but it is looking a little bit 3D-ish um, so in the next part we will cover that okay so now we've gone through all of those steps uh, we kind of have an ice cream complete now but we're going to add some one final touch to the cream uh, just to make it look a little bit more realistic and uh, I think we're done um, so what we will do is we'll add a texture and we'll add some noise to the texture and create some sort of like creamy sort of effect so let's do that uh, so if you go down to the um, texture panel down here and double click we just create some random texture and we can just drop that on to our ice cream uh, let me just get rid of this and let's just click into the texture so let's have a look at the basics so we'll turn the color off first and by default it'll just come in as black so you won't be able to see so this is what it'll look like so what we're going to do is we're going to change the reflect reflectance um, so I'm going to change the type to GGX and then I'm going to take down the uh, roughness a little bit and then put up the reflect and strength let's put it up as high as we can and we can have a look at that so it kind of looks like metal at the moment um, uh, what we want is we want the the corn as you can see here the corn to kind of reflect a little bit off the uh, the ice cream just to make it look a little bit more realistic um, so you'll see that when it pops up in a second so you can see that the corn is reflecting a little bit off the ice cream and um, if you look at reference pictures you'll see that the corn reflects off the cream uh, so this is exactly what we want uh, maybe I might take it down a touch because it might be too reflective uh, so we'll just take down that maybe down to 80 and I think that should be uh, enough um so the next step is we want to add the color back to the uh the the ice cream so let's just render that out and we'll see what we've got it's probably a little bit high actually looking at it now um so i'm going to take down the take down the uh the reflectiveness to maybe 50 i think let's render and see what is going on I think that'll work actually let me just put the color back on this should work so I think that's working quite nicely um, you don't want to have too many dark colors in your ice cream because it's quite a reflective surface so um, yeah so let's go back to the re reflectiveness and then we'll go down to uh, Festnel and we'll turn that to dielectric and let's just put this up to 1.5 and now we can give this a quick render again and we'll see what we've got going on and this should look pretty realistic I think 
So yeah, that is kind of what we want. Um, but also the surface is a little bit too smooth for me. So I'm going to add some noise to the surface. So we'll just, uh, we'll go in again and we'll just render this. Um, and as you can see, the surface is way too smooth. So it looks a little bit like plastic at the moment. So I want to kind of look a bit like a, a cream or a foam. So let's, we can just do that using, uh, the bump map. So we go back to basic and then we click on bump and then we'll go over to bump and then texture, add some noise and then we'll go to noise and then noise type. Uh, let's try pezzle. We can add that and then we'll jump back and you can already see in the texture that there's kind of like some little bumps. So let's just render that and we'll see what this looks like. I might have to bring this down a little bit. It might be too much. It might look a little bit like a um, marshmallow, but so that's a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring it down. So it's a little bit smaller, uh, a little bit, uh, not as strong or deep. And then we can render that. And that looks pretty good to me. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So let's just zoom out and get the full picture and we'll give that a quick render. Um, so let me just jump on, uh, where are we looking? Render region. And then we can just render the region rather than the entire thing. So yeah, so I think that pretty much covers everything, how to make an ice cream in Cinema 4D. Um, I hope you enjoyed this class. Uh, there were a few complex parts to this class and if you're new to Cinema 4D, hopefully it didn't overwhelm you. But uh, I appreciate, appreciate you taking the time to get all the way to this point and get to the end. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments box below. And um, if you would like to contact me directly, you can contact me here at my personal email address and I can answer any questions or um, anything you might have in your mind. Um, I'm happy to help. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel and you can see my other tutorials on my YouTube channel and I also have a website if you want to check out my work. But yeah, I appreciate you guys taking the time uh to get to this point and uh following all the steps to create an ice cream um you can also download the um the working files below as well and uh you can also just kind of tear apart this this folder this file if uh if you can't really be bothered to do the lesson but uh i appreciate you guys taking the time and i hope you have a good one thanks very much goodbye Thank <laughs> you.